We've come to Robin's Farm Racing Stables in Chiddingfold, right on the border of Surrey and West Sussex, to meet the new man in charge here, Ollie Stevens. The yard was built and was formerly used by Peter Winkworth, but was sold last year to Sheikh Fahad Al Thani of Qatar. And it was Sheikh Fahad who gave Ollie Stevens and his wife Heta a tremendous opportunity to start training here. But what was it about them that impressed the Sheikh? I met Oli at Kinlin Seals one um, two years back. Uh, they, were, they were still working up in the US in Manhattan. Um, met them. I met Oli for uh, for dinner. Nothing to do with, the, with looking for a chain or anything like that. Um, when when I thought about you know, doing a training yard, buying a training yard, I spoke to David and we sat together and so we started to see you know throwing ideas of who to who do we get into this place um, by opportunity he told me that Ollie is coming back to England from America. If you see his CV, uh, you know, he's, he's pre-trained a lot of good horses and, he've been, and he's been in, with, with trainers in England and with trainers in America, which is something that I was looking for. I wanted, I wanted somebody who's going to bring both codes to the game um, and be able to, to use and utilize technology in training. For instance, you've seen we use a lot of heart rate monitors on our horses, which helps a lot getting feedback, you know, on their fitness level, gallops works, and all of that, um, which is quite vital. And we're going to hopefully get a galloping treadmill here as well. Could you tell us why you chose to buy this particular setup? I was I was looking for a commercial training centre um, in and around London, you know. I, I wanted a place where I could drive up, you know, early mornings, easy, easy commute, which is nice enough here. It's an hour's drive. Plus, it had the added bonus of being in, you know, it's a rich area for, you know, you're going to get owners from this part of town. And the biggest thing is uh, that it's there is no other horse, you know, race race horse trainer down in this area. You know. So it's an added bonus that we're going to get, hopefully get some owners from in and around this area, especially London area. I mean, it's a beautiful country as you see it, you know. Um, lovely gallops, very, very good gallops. And uh, I think um, hard owners showed us that you can train a winner from, <laughs> from Robin's Farm. So I know we're quite excited about that. Three-year-old filly, Hard Walnut, got the Robins Farm team off the mark when breaking her maiden at Lingfield in February. It was Ollie Stevens' first winner as a licensed trainer, and hopefully the first of many successes for Sheikh Fahad. So Ollie, how did you how did you come to get here to Robins Farm and working for Sheikh Fahad? Well, Heather and I were based in the States, mostly in Kentucky at Keeneland Racetrack. And Hedra had worked for David in the past before she went over to... For David Redvers? Yeah. Yeah. So she worked for him for the, at the sales before she went over to work for Michael Dickinson. Um, so it was September sales and we used to try and meet up with them for a drink. And um, there was huge excitement one year that David was there with Sheikh Fahad and, you know, excitement about, you know, a potentially very important owner, new owner coming into racing and we went out and had dinner that night and it, it, it sort of came from there and then the, the day that our twins were born I sent a sort of round robin email to everybody saying you know, children, Great news. children and mother are well and I had a reply from David saying phone me back as soon as possible I've got a proposition. Wow. So it, it, it grew from there so really the day that the twins were born is a sort of a real turning point of, in, in, in more ways than just their birth. You, you worked for one or two big name trainers in the past. Well, how did you get the bug, the racing bug, Holly? Well, we were talking to Sheikh Fahad about this as well. Everybody gets it. <laughs> when you get it, you can't shake it off. So you what was your can't. background? I grew up in Newmarket, yeah. um, or five miles outside. And it was probably exactly what my parents didn't want me to do. So like, <laughs> like any good young boy, I did the opposite of what I was told. And, and just loved it from a young age, used to ride my bicycle into town just to see Henry Cecil's string go up the hill, you know, when it was a huge string. Um, my grandmother always kept ponies, so we sort of grew up around that. So I'd ride from Saxon Street to Moulton most days to, 
deal with the ponies and things like that. And then, age 12 or so, started spending time in Julie Cecil's yard, and really then it was no turning back. Right. You were hooked. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a bit more about the, the facilities, the conditioning facilities you got here, Ollie. We've got two miles of all-weather gallops, um, most of which are hardwood shavings, um, similar to wood chip, but it's a smaller flake and it rolls in quite tight. Um, rides, rides nice and fast. It's ideal for two-year-olds. And then we've also got a Wexford sand canter, which has been really useful, on the, the one on the inside, yeah. which has just been a really good conditioning tool. Um, you know, we don't... Horses coming back from injury don't need to go fast on it to get a good base level of fitness. So what are they doing this morning? You're just doing some... This first lot are doing two trots around the farm, which is a couple of miles. Yeah. And then they'll have one canter up here. Right. Um, just the one? Yeah, fairly yeah. sensible pace. Yeah. And then second lot will be doing a bit more than that. OK. Um, so these are the, 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 the babies and the more back of ones coming yeah, up? Exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And, you know, the likes of a hard walnut who doesn't need much training, you know, just sort of fits in with these babies. Fine. She's plenty fit enough and puts plenty into it, so... Yeah. You've got to know her, how she works, and... Yeah. Uh, it's all about getting to know them, Molly, I suppose, isn't yeah. it? Like you were saying about getting to know the gallops as well as, you, as you're bedding yourself in here. Yeah, and we're, we're lucky that we had a good four or five months before I even had a licence with horses here, mm -hmm. figuring it out. Um, the odd hack was pretty much put into training from, from day one, just so we could <laughs> figure out the gallops yeah. and ride them ourselves at, at, at different speeds and, and work it all out. So right. he's, he's had a really tough autumn and winter. Um, <laughs> Never but, been fitter. <laughs> and the, I mean, the other thing has helped is um, actually had them all GPSed and working with a company based up north that do heart rate monitoring with GPS. Oh, uh, right. And just figuring out how much work there is in each of them. Which, again, if you've been an assistant in Newmarket for 10 years and you know how much work there is up Warren Hill for a backward two-year-old, but sure. it was hard for us to tell that here. So yeah. that, that's been actually really useful for learning the gallops. Every time a horse works here, they're fitted with a heart rate monitor tracked by GPS satellite. Not only do you get the heart rate, you get the horse's speed and the recovery rate, and every owner can log on to gain access to this vital information. And here comes the boss. Yep. And I've got to ask you now, before you get to within earshot, <laughs> what sort, what's he like to work for? Uh, you, I mean, you genuinely couldn't want to work for a, a better person. He's enthusiastic. He's also understanding, which, you know, we're all going to be making mistakes and, at various points and very understanding of that. And his sort of, his vision and his ideas that come from all over the world, from all of his trainers, all sort of feed back to here and hopefully, you know, help us turn out, you know, turn out a better product at the yes, end of it. Yes. How could it do well? Very well. Very, very well. I found a race for her. Did you? Oh, good. So, another bonus race. <laughs> April or May? 8th of April. 8th of April? Oh, okay. Yeah. She outworked hard worn out on um, Saturday. Is it that up? So the <laughs> owner won't be happy yeah. to, hear, to see this. <laughs> I noticed that the owner was quite enthusiastic there about, a, about Hoku, the two-year-old filly by Holy Roman Emperor. Yeah, she's, she's done absolutely nothing wrong so far. She's quite a spirited filly, and the biggest challenge over the winter has been keeping all four feet on the ground and a rider with a leg either side of her. <laughs> But she's really settled down in her work, and um, yeah, she's the right sort of horse. It's it's easy for me to get too excited at this stage, but she's a very easy horse to be excited about. She's got a lot of ability, is what you're saying, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> and where would you start her? Um, possibly at Kenton on the eighth. There's a Phillies race there, so that that's got a racing post bonus, which would be nice to pick up. Um, I think she's a horse that we'd want to give every opportunity to go to Ascot. 
she's, I wouldn't say fragile in her mind, but she would need, you know, I don't want to mess her up mentally. So I think if we can find, you know, nice little races for her to run through, not rush to go and break a maiden by a distance first time out or anything silly like that, but just let her develop is, is the big thing with her mentally. Every horse at Robin's Farm is stabled in one of the 51 boxes inside the three state-of-the-art American-style barns. Sheikh Fahad may own the yard, but Ollie Stevens is very much open to the public. From the very beginning, the plan was that we would have half the yard for the Sheikh's horses, and then over the next few years, build up, as we build up our client base, to have the other half of the yard with, with, with a range of owners. Having been abroad for the last five years, you know, that was going to be a challenge this first year, especially without having run horses and so on. So my target was five, my target to myself. I think we've nearly doubled that now and, um, you know, aim to keep growing that. Right, that's impressive. And Peter Winkworth, the former owner and builder of this, this yard, has got a few with you as well, which is great. Yeah, Peter's a, he's a great supporter <laughs> of young trainers. I think the av his average age of trainers um, probably younger than me. And um, he... He supports us with one whole horse and two halves. Um, he lives just down the road, so it's sort of great to have his input. And sure. you know, he can tell us bits about the property that we, you know, didn't know, or you know, gems of his experience. Sure. Ollie's wife Hetta also brings a tremendous amount of experience to the team. Hetta, we were just chatting to Ollie about how important it was to have a, a team, husband and wife team. Right. And I think that it's very evident here, but you've both got incredible experience and different backgrounds. Yeah, we do. Um, obviously, I've worked in racing um, since I came out of school. Um, my first job was with Henrietta Knight, um, and she pretty much started it for me. Um, and it's been quite a long journey from there, but um, made sure that I've gone out and, you know, every single job I've taken has been a step forward um, and just been very determined that this was going to be the end product, you know, to be able to, to train racehorses. You, I bet you couldn't believe it when you got offered this opportunity, the pair of you, could you? No, gosh, no, no, absolutely not. Especially having just come back from America, pregnant with twin girls, um, and, you know, for, to have this opportunity is just absolutely incredible. Um, and we're jolly well going to make sure that we make the most of it. <laughs> I, I bet. Well, best of luck with that. <laughs> Thank I you. I think it's, it's fascinating that you've got to, uh, not just you and Ollie here, but surrounded by a team of people that come from different sort of backgrounds. There are people that are involved with the polo world in the yard as well, aren't there? Yeah. Yeah, very much so. I think it's very important. I was actually just talking to one of our girls, Tegan, just then, who came from Polo. You know, if, if you're any kind of a, want to call yourself a horseman, I think it's very important that you do dabble in lots of different disciplines. Um, and we're very lucky that we've got a fantastic team here. We don't mind if they come with no racing experience. As long as they're willing to learn and willing to put in the hard work, I think that's the most important bit. You know, Ollie and I, you know, we weren't born straight into the racing industry. Um, we've had to work for it. Um, and that's what will instill in, in all the, every, anybody who comes and works here at Robin's Farm. Hetter rides Jacob Katz's second lot, a horse that Ollie has got big plans for. Ollie, Jacob Katz was full of, um, full of beans when he came up the, the gallops there. What have you got in mind for him? He was bought specifically to go to the Hunt Cup, and you know that's what we'll do. There are two obvious races for him, one at Thirsk, one at Ripon, leading into the Hunt Cup but he'll probably just run the once and go straight to Ascot. Yeah, he's a horse that's got a touch of class about him. It should, he's a, almost a flagship horse potential there, isn't he? Yeah, we, that, we're really hoping so, and he feels, he feels to me, having sat on him, and, and Het is very excited about him, like a proper, proper sort of horse. Um, so, no, exci exciting to have one like him. Well, the, and the pressure's on because the boss really wants to win the Hunt <laughs> Cup, he says. <laughs> well, that's probably, easy, that's probably easier than if I went and chose the wrong race for him. So. <laughs> As well as Hoku and Jacob Katz, Ollie picked out another four horses for us to look out for over the coming weeks. Ollie, this is another of your two-year-olds, uh, Extortionist by, by Dandy Man. Yeah, and it's, it's pretty easy to get excited at this time of year when you haven't run your first two-year-old, but this guy looks like he's above average. Shown all the speed that a Dandy Man should show. Um, I can see he'll be running quite early. I'm just not 100% on his coat. Mm -hmm. While it looks fine, it's just not quite the same as some of our others. You know, he's just still holding on to a bit there. And so really, once that comes, we'll start getting excited about running him. But I could see him being handy enough over five. Who have you got here, Ollie? Got The Art of Racing, who's a three-year-old by acclamation. Showed 
plenty of speed breaking his maiden last year. I mean, here on the gallops, he'd, he'd show more toe than a Roman sandal, I'd say, but the big thing is just to keep him settled down, and that's our main sort of project at the moment. He was getting quite keen with Richard Hannon last year and keen in his races. Um, so it's just plenty of... We're, not, we're never looking for fast works with him. Mm -hmm. Just we tuck him in behind the old hack, and he could be a really exciting horse if we can just try and keep the lid on him and... Are you happy with his, his, his rating? Very. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not too happy, don't tell the handicapper. And you've cut him, I think, Ollie, since, since you've had him, haven't you? Yeah, we did. We did it as soon as he came in from the sales. Um, he had one testicle that was undescended, and I just wonder whether that might be a little uncomfortable for him. Mm -hmm. um, we just hacked him around all winter, just lots of steady, slow work, and just, you know, just try and keep the lid on him a bit, and actually used him as a hack for a, for a good month or so as part of that. Um, I do think, though, when we start running him and giving him proper bits of work, that it, he'll... Come into his own. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this one is a special filly for you, Ollie, because she was your first winner, Hard Walnut. Yeah, she's, she might only be rated 73, but to me she's very, very special. Yeah. Um, she's an absolute pleasure to deal with. You know, she gets out there and runs her race every time. Um, quite frustrating at the moment in these three-year-old handicaps. We seem to find a, an unexposed horse that just, just gets us. And her running style makes her sort of a little bit one-dimensional. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you've got a nice enough horse, you know, you know that she's there at taught at the end. She, she worked with tremendous enthusiasm this morning, didn't she? She was yeah, full we, of beans. We, we had a real good look at our races from last year and the way she trains at home. And she just gets really frustrated if you try and hold her up. And, uh, you know, the, I suppose the only thing we've done is just let her run and let her go out there and make it. And I was really pleased last time at Kempton. I was always concerned that if something came and breathed down her neck, that it might just, you know, set her off a bit too much and she would just run too early. But she dealt with it with sort of great maturity, so and I think we can, we can win a handicap with it. It's just going to take a few runs to do it. These are exciting times at Robin's Farm. Although a quick start will be important, this is a long-term investment as far as Sheikh Bahad is concerned. But let's hope that some big race winners are not long in coming.